uh, and now we're up off to uh, the intro for our guest tonight. Uh, as some of you probably already know, our guest is Melissa, and I'm a big fan of her and the content that she uh, creates on uh, Instagram as Melissa in Tech, but also on TikTok most recently. I know that she's very excited about TikTok. I'm trying to get into that excitement as well, but somehow it's it's really hard to manage two different platforms at the same time for me. It's like impossible. I have to uh, pick her brains after this, uh, this meetup. So uh, she's a content creator for um, UX design content. And also she is a UX consultant that's currently in a very exciting career change uh, that will take place. Uh, she will switch jobs um starting next week but i'm gonna invite her to share a couple of words about herself and uh and uh tell us a little about her journey into ux design and how she ended up as a ux consultant and how she ended up doing content for ux designers and everything so hi melissa thank you for joining and the stage is yours <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I am Melissa Sudo. I'm located in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. Uh, I just want to echo the apology. Thank you all for rejoining. Or if you have no idea what we're talking about, welcome to the session. We are so excited to talk about uh, career paths in user experience design. A little bit about my background. I currently work at an international consulting firm called Slalom in the Chicago market. They are a wonderful consulting firm. I uh, bittersweetly decided to switch companies. I am joining Boston Consulting Group where I will be helping with their digital ventures branch. So I will be pitching new product design ideas and working with software developers to actually uh, produce that ideas and um, put them to market. That sounds super exciting. And um, I'm, I would be, and congratulations on your job change. Uh, it's always, uh, I mean, for me, whenever I see someone switching jobs, I, I, I think it's the greatest thing that can happen for them at that moment in time, because you get to explore, obviously, new worlds, new projects, new challenges, new, um, even new struggles, which is also a good thing, because it means you're learning. So congratulations for this. Uh, and uh, tell us a couple of words about your journey into UX design. So how did you, uh, how did you choose the consultancy career path or did it choose you because sometimes things just naturally happen tell us a little about your own background yeah i'd love to so i originally graduated from university with a marketing degree in 2017 when i graduated i did not like any of my career options and i actually my first role was as a marketing coordinator at a construction firm and my job there was to create uh, something called an RFP. If you're not familiar with that, it's putting together essentially a big resume for your company to apply for bids. And as I was doing that, I noticed there were a lot of design errors and just overall no consistency through what we were submitting on um, both print and digital. So while I was putting together the designs that were already approved by the C-suite, I was also skipping lunch and staying late at work to recreate the designs in a way that was more modern and spoke highly of who we were as a construction firm. After that, I kind of fell in love with the idea of combining my knowledge of doing some research from my marketing background, and then also combining that with the business process and needs while also trying to understand what my users need. Um, so I kept talking about it and I was super excited about this new field and this new idea, but it actually wasn't until my dad told me that it was called user experience design. And he was the one who said, hey, Melissa, I think it would be great if you did a boot camp." So I actually enrolled into a boot camp, which I totally recommend doing a boot camp if you like to have a lot of structure and someone to work with consistently. Um, it's very helpful. Personally, I decided not to finish my boot camp because a lot of what I was learning was it overlapped with marketing. Um, I really love to do market research and digital design, and I decided to take a step away from finishing my boot camp. What I did instead was I actually went on Craigslist, LinkedIn, Indeed gigs to start pitching my services as a marketing and design freelancer. 
And I was able to pick up some really small gigs, um, though they weren't uh, very high, highly priced. Um, I was able to pretty much pay myself to learn how to do user experience design. And through picking up those types of projects and meeting really incredible folks and companies, I was able to find mentors along the way who really challenged my understanding of what user experience design was uh, versus marketing and versus graphic design. That's a great story. And I really appreciate the, the courage to pivot and to do your thing. I didn't know you started off through a bootcamp. And uh, I also appreciate giving up on the bootcamp when it didn't feel like the best option for you at that moment in time. And you found something that was even more tangible and practical and doing actual work. So I, uh, I'm always a big fan of a very personalized, uh, spontaneous and, and authentic story. So thank you for sharing your story. And um, I'm happy that you're a UX designer today and you get to put content about it in the world. Um, so the topic for today is actually career paths for UX designers. So in, in this respect, my, my, my first question for you would be, what are some of the most common career paths that UX designers get to choose from? And uh, you're a consultant that's pretty specific. Um, what are some other paths that you've learned about you've seen around maybe you've considered for yourself and what do you think is the is the 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 the, the sea of options <laughs> the small sea of options because there are plenty in there but like the top the most common options I completely agree. So in addition to user experience consulting, I've heard and seen a lot of great um, people go for user experience freelancing, which is very similar to user experience consulting. If you're looking for more of a corporate nine to five role, there's also UX specialist um, career paths you can take. So that would be like maybe you are really in love with one of the aspects aspects of user experience design, like research. So some people specialize as a UX uh, researcher. You can also lean into more of a managerial role. So creative director, art director, um, design director. And then I've also seen folks have a wonderful career doing UX advanced um, professional work. So that would be um, similar to consulting, or if you wanted to be a specialist, instead of just having that one label as UX consultant or UX researcher, you would be a senior UX researcher. So in addition to being involved with the day-to-day -day deliverables, you're also um, leaning in towards that managerial side. You've covered a, a lot of uh, angles to this conversation because I think that it all comes down to a couple of choices that you can make. So one choice would be the specialty, the specialization of your role. So do you want to be a UX researcher, a UX writer? Um, maybe you want to be just a UI designer focusing on UI. And so um, spe spe specialization is one choice. Another choice is definitely uh, choosing between um, a individual contributor path and a management path, which um, are totally different worlds. And somehow I feel that many individual, individual contributors are getting pushed into management roles just to feel that their career is growing. And for them, it feels like the only option. And that's a problem in the design industry. Maybe we will dive into that later. And another choice, the third choice. So um, like like the main things, the main categories of decisions that we can take in regards to our career. The third choice would be uh, choosing whether to join a big company, a small startup, choosing a, a design agency, or being a freelancer, so doing work on your own. So these are pretty much the options. And of course, you have different combinations between them. But I think that these these are the choices that, that we get to make as, um, as designers. And I think it all comes down to who we are and what we like doing and what we're good at. And, and so it's a very personal choice. There's no recommendation that we can give tonight. But um, we have a question from an Instagram uh, user from UX Goodies um, with the, the profile name one of these mornings. So if you're here, hi. Uh, the question was, can a person choose a path 
when they're just starting in UX design or do they have to wait a couple of years between being able to make any kind of choice? So is this choice something that anyone can make or do you have to be senior to make a choice for your career? I love that. I'm going to start off by giving a consultant answer in that it depends. So um, similar to what we were just discussing a moment ago, if you start at a smaller company, um, big tech or a design agency, I would say the size of your company and the size of your team will really help determine which paths you can pursue. But that doesn't mean, let's say, if you are really um, on a set path at your current role, uh, you can't try to find a different path in your spare time. Um, I do like to say that you can do whatever it is that you are the most passionate and excited about. Um, though that also comes hand in hand with wanting to put in the hard work to um, reach those set of skills that you need to achieve those goals. But I don't think that you have to um, reach a certain level of seniority. I do think we all can learn something from someone, regardless of how many years of experience that they have um, in a specific field, because we all have our own paths to where we are, uh, especially right now, we all got here um, on a different path. But if you are really excited about a specific path, I think you should take time to try to pursue it. If you're struggling to find that path in your current company or in your current role, I would really encourage you to um, maybe uh, follow a YouTube tutorial or um, just like a, a light two hour course where you can really test if this is something that you want to do every day, nine to five or whatever your schedule is um, that you hope it to be, but I don't think you should just rely or wait until you have a certain amount of years of experience to pursue something. On the other hand, I do want to say that I, um, one of my most incredible mentors, Anna Afias, who works at um, my current company, Slalom, would always encourage me the first year that we worked together. You know, I, I hear you that you're really passionate about UX design, but don't pigeonhole yourself right now. Spend this, these next 12 months really uh, working on different projects to see maybe you might be more passionate about another part of the design process. And I'm really happy I listened to her because I still love um, UX design the whole entire process, but I've really fallen in love with user experience research. And that's really helped to catapult um, my next career move with Boston Consulting Group. Super valuable insight. I think that this is something that I would want to like emphasize. Um, you, you can make a choice early on. So if you know that you're very passionate about copywriting and you want to conversely do UX writing, um, then you can do that. But it's a very, very strong piece of advice to not limit yourself. I think especially the early years should be used for experimentation, trying different things, exploring different uh, potential paths, obviously, but different areas of a design process and different types of companies, maybe. Um, so it should be like a playground for running experiments uh, to understand what would make you happy, what you like most. And of course, that can change. Um, through the course of your career, but definitely don't rush into making a decision because it's it's probably going to be a quite uninformed decision and we don't do that <laughs> as designers. <laughs> and um, another point to that is that probably the only thing that you really can't choose or can't uh, go for in the early, uh, in the first year or two years of your career is choosing a management role. So I think that to, to decide between going for a design uh, director position in the next couple of years, then you have to have some experience as a UX yeah. designer, as a individual practitioner, as an individual contributor to be able to understand what this is all about and what are design goals for a project and how to run a project and how to lead the project eventually and how to lead teams and so on. So this is not something that you can like, or you, if you know that that's what you want to do, you can decide very early on, but you still can't skip stages. So you have to go through a design career, a classic design career before moving into a management role. But as per the uh, different uh, types of design roles for UX research, UX writing, UI design, then definitely I would say play with everything, go explore everything, because it might surprise you. In our bootcamp, we see this happening again and again. So people come in and they say, 
oh, I love UX research. I want to be a UX researcher. This is what I'm most passionate about. And then when they actually have to go through all the work, there's a lot of hard work that goes into UX research and you have to be very methodical. You have to employ a lot of critical thinking. And so it's it's a hard work. And many times they, they end up saying, you know what, I really prefer doing something else in the design process because in research, I, I don't find myself as much as I would have thought I will. And so um, it might be that even if you have a clear idea of what you want to do, then by actually doing it, by actually experimenting, you will be surprised that you will like other things better. So it goes the same for people who many times they feel like they're very uh, aesthetic and they like visual design and they want to make pretty screens. And that's what's most exciting about being a UX designer. And they end up becoming more passionate about solving problems, doing their research work, um, going out there, talking with users and so on. So keep an open mind. And um, yeah, this is a, an incredible piece of advice that your mentor gave you. And uh, I wanna make sure that everybody gets it in our, <laughs> in our conversation today. So, um, so, okay, let's say that you're either in your early days as a designer or a couple of years into it. How do you know? what path to choose. So what would be some tips and tricks maybe, or some, I don't know, practical advice as to how to choose the right path for you? <laughs> yeah, I think um, from my personal experience and then talking with my mentors and colleagues who are in this industry, I've heard that people find the right path for them. I'm going to say the opposite of what we just discussed, but it's through experience. So I um, began my UX design career as a freelancer, and I loved it. I loved always doing heads down work. Um, I woke up and I felt excited about it because I was getting to do the entire design process from discovery to research to ideating to prototyping to hand off to the deliverable, uh, excuse me, the uh, development team. But then as I continued to grow in my career these last three years, I realized that I actually love working on a team and I don't want to be the sole contributor to a project. Um, there are certain parts that I really enjoy owning. And I honestly never thought I'd get to that moment where I would lean um, more towards the managerial side. Um, but I think just working and getting involved with different types of projects and trying to test which part you're the most excited about. Um, I do like, I do really want to add that design is such an amazing field where um, as you continue to grow your career, it will be harder to um, try to take a step back and transition to a different aspect of design. But we, uh, since we all are following a similar design process, it is okay for you to lean in towards one area of um, these types of career paths and then decide a few years later, hey, you know, this was a really great um, experience for me, but I think that I'm enjoying, I think I want to try something else as uh, leaning towards the managerial side rather than the sole contributor side. But I think just getting experience and trying to understand what you're good at, what you're excited about, and then also what you are interested in learning. Um, I actually use uh, Notion, if you're not familiar, it's a really design friendly um, version of Excel. And I keep track of all my projects and I write down what I enjoyed about those projects, um, what I heard from my team, what I was good at doing, and then where I needed to improve. And then based on all three of those categories, I decided which um, path I should lean on as I continued. I love Notion myself. I use it Me a lot. Too. No, I'm becoming addicted to it. I mean, I, I'm going to end up having everything in Notion. So my life will be, <laughs> will be <laughs> a Notion space. So, um, but there's a very interesting insight in there. So I think that uh, one of the mm, most interesting aspects of everything you mentioned uh, is um, being reflective. So practicing uh, introspection, uh, writing down, uh, documenting your work, writing down your uh, even feelings about working in a certain environment or project or in, um, in, in whatever design challenge it is you're doing. So if you capture everything through journaling or in Notion or whatever works best for you, then it will really help you. Uh, so self-reflection exercises will definitely, definitely help you um, take a step back and be able to have better, more clarity as to what you want to do and what makes you happy. 
And a mistake I see very often in the industry is that people start off by researching uh, salaries for different types of UX roles. Uh, how much will a UX researcher make? How much will a UX writer make? And so on. So that's not bad, obviously, because you do want to make sure that you're going to make a good living or you're going to be happy financially in whatever role uh, you choose to take. But at the same time, I feel like it's a bit like um, it's a it's a bit of a fallacy because would you want to be very well paid or unsignificantly better paid in a in a UX research role but hate it <laughs> than to be like a, a bit lower down the payment um, um, level but be very happy with your job and be very excited so I don't think that's the way to go about it although definitely it's a part of the the research that you need to do before uh, choosing to explore a certain path one over the other but I feel that the most important thing is to start from yourself and if you do this introspection exercise very early on I'm not sure if you'll have a lot of insights to 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 help uh, get out so you won't know how the design process feels for you because you've never been through it you won't know if you're happy with doing UX research because you've never been through it so there will be a lot of unknown in the beginning but if you keep questioning if you keep looking inside then I think the purpose of having a career is to have one pillar of our lives that's very satisfying that that gives us some sort of accomplishment. I don't believe in having our careers like uh, it's the essential part of our life. We have to balance it with different aspects, but definitely you can have a lot of gratification, a lot of joy from it. So in order to have that, you have to start from yourself. So what makes you happy? What do you want to work on? What will bring you satisfaction in a role? So if you constantly look at that, uh, and you do that, like we said, by journaling, by notion, by doing, by by really writing down everything that goes on in, in the experiments you're running, then you'll get closer and closer to choosing the right path. And so, but the answer will always depend on who you are and what makes you happy. So there's no way in which we could say myself or Melissa or everyone in the audience, you know what, be a UX researcher. That's what you need to do. That's impossible. It's very, very personal. It's subjective. So it has to start from yourself. So with, uh, with my thoughts about it uh, just um, out there, let's move into another question for today, which is if we were to talk about, let's say a popularity contest of UX uh, paths of, of career uh, options, what do you think will be the most sought after in the next years? What do you think? So if someone is clearly has no idea as to what they wanna do, but they just wanna do something that's gonna be in demand, which are the roles that you feel will be in demand in the next couple of years? Yeah, so again, I just want to highlight that my experience is in consulting. So if you're not um, too sure what consultants do, I get put on a different client project every three to six months. So I meet a different client in a different industry and I assess their needs from a UX lens. And what I've been noticing for almost this past last two years is that user experience research is becoming super in demand in my industry. And I think that's because finally um, more traditional companies are starting to understand that design is so much more than making things look pretty. I know that is one of my favorite parts is being able to organize something and add that visual look and feel to it. But I can really tell now that people in different industries are understanding the value behind the whole entire design process. And they're really loving the deliverables that my team and I put together and submit for the user experience research part. Because as we are finalizing our designs and um, those beautiful screens, when they ask us, ask us like, hey, Melissa, why did you put that feature up here, you know, before it was on this page on uh, the very bottom of it. And we can go back to our research and say, well, because we observed X, Y, Z, we are suggesting that you put it up here to increase um, user uh, engagement. And then the companies really take a step back and start to understand how incredible adding this step to their entire product development can really enhance their product launch and success. So I would say user experience research. And then in addition to that, I definitely, um, again, I come from a consulting background, trying to make my way 
into industry. Uh, so I can't speak too much about the industry uh, current trends, but I do see a lot of user experience consulting roles uh, appearing. And I will say that depending on which company you work for, you are really able to negotiate a fair salary for yourself, at least in America. I haven't checked in other uh, countries at this moment, but I would say UX consulting, which would be kind of a generalist, and then user experience research. And then the last one would be visual design. So that's user interface and um, uh, just general visual design. I totally align to that prediction. I just want to add to that, that I feel that um, UX writers will also be sort of in demand. I think that companies are starting yes. to understand that. So uh, somebody was asking in the chat, uh, what is a UX writer? And now is the right time to answer that question as well. So a UX <laughs> writer is the person who handles the micro copy in a digital product. So in apps, in every interaction that you have with, with a digital touch point, the, the, the copy, is written ideally by a UX writer. This is what a UX writer does. So to make, to help the user achieve, uh, accomplish their tasks in the product in a very explicit and clear way. So this is what a UX writer should be doing. And many companies are opening roles for UX writing as well. So uh, they're starting to see value in that. And also I think that if you wanna like uh, prepare for the future, maybe you could also look at different industries that are that will be in demand. So definitely looking at emerging technologies, AR, VR, um, 3D design, looking at things that um, like, this is not a UX role per se, but it's like industries that will need talent that's not there yet because the whole industry is just starting to, to bloom. Uh, and so um, you could you could do if you want to make sure that you'll be in demand in a couple of years, you can also look at that, like what industries will be um, not very well covered if you want. But definitely as a UX designer, we have to be able to design in any industry. Uh, so you can't prepare for that, but you can definitely have uh, some understanding or look into understanding those technologies and um, and prepare. <laughs> okay, so uh, the last question that I have on my list were, were there already, uh, and I'm happy because that means that we'll have time to take the nice questions that the audience already submitted. Thank you for that, and keep them coming because I hope that we'll have time for as many as possible. So my last question was around um, choosing between an individual contributor path and a management path. When does one make that choice? And how do you make that choice? How do you know which one would be uh, better for you or if, you're, if, if, if that's what you wanna do? Yeah, I love that question. I would say that one would know how to make that choice once they've really given the individual role a go. So really trying to test the different career paths that we've already highlighted throughout this talk. Um, the different parts of the UX design process and really see if you like actually being hands on with the work that's being submitted. Um, if you are enjoying the overall design process, but maybe you don't like doing every aspect of it, and maybe you want to lean towards more of a, a reviewer type of role, then I feel like that is um, your mindset saying, okay, you know, I really do like using the UX lens in my day to day job, but I feel like I would be better at um, being a leader and managing this team. So instead of being the one to create um, each deliverable for each step of the design process, you feel like I want to ensure that we are um, getting all three needs that we need to, which would be the business needs and process the user needs, and then ensuring tech uh, feasibility. Um, so if that is something that interests you to take a step back and be less hands-on, I think that would um, indicate to yourself that it's time to make that transition. I do say, um, I do think that you would understand more as you gain more experience throughout your career. I think um, if you do at the very start of your career, maybe you're just beginning your design career, maybe you're just beginning your career right now and you think, yeah, I want to be a manager. I want to lead folks. Either way, you will have to gain that experience. So um, you might find, hey, I don't actually want to lead people. I want to be heads down in Figma, in Miro and really going through all those design steps to ensure um, the product or my client is happy. 
but I think experience is the best indicator. Definitely. Um, like we keep circling back to the idea. Of <laughs> I, I want to add just one point to that. I, I feel that some people just naturally emerge as leaders. So maybe you could also look at that. Like you said earlier, what do people come to you for um, or something along those lines? Sometimes people just naturally move into a leadership position if they're good at it, like the team kind of um, leads them <laughs> into the leadership role that can also happen. So if you want that to happen, or if you're excited about becoming a leader, and you feel like you'd be good at it, and that's what makes you happy, then um, it's like that old saying that goes, uh, if you want to um, just, um, how was it? Uh, dress up for the job you want to have right so you can start acting like a leader uh, today without being pushy or uh, arrogant with your team don't don't act like their leader but kind of inspire them start mentoring people start start showing the qualities the traits that you would want a leader to have or do you think would be valuable for other people helpful for other people start uh, spending more time articulating the vision for the product talking to other um, functions in the company talking to product managers managers or developers aligning them, uh, aligning engineering with product and everything. So you can start doing that work even informally in the beginning. And if you're good at it, and if you're happy with it, then sometimes it will just happen as a natural transition that you will become a leader if that's the career path you want to go for. But I feel that the industry should definitely have, um, at least in mature design teams, should have a very clear path for individual contributors because now I feel that many of them feel like they reach a glass ceiling at some point and if they want to continue to grow in their career then they have to move into a management role and then they do that but they are brilliant individual contributors but they're not very good managers so that's where they feel um, disappointed they feel they start doubting themselves and so on and it's bad for everyone so I feel that a mature industry offers clear paths for both uh, potential roads that one wants to take. So these are my closing thoughts about that. Um, before we start taking the questions that we have in the chat, which I'm very excited about, are there any other things, uh, Melissa, that you want to add about career paths or if there's anything you feel uh, we didn't touch on or you want to um tell people to consider when it comes to choosing their path and and everything any closing things about this because the questions in the chat are not necessarily extremely related so we will be doing a lot of jumping through different topics once we take them <laughs> yeah i would love just to say um just rounding up everything that we talked about that again, um, if there is something you are passionate about, don't let your years of experience hold you back. If you are newer in your career, um, you can show those ideas of leadership or maybe the area you want to specialize in an, in, in an informal way. And I also always try to remind everyone that switching over to UX design, it's a really, really hot field and it's so accessible, but because of those two things, it is a little bit more competitive. And just remind yourself, it is a marathon, not a sprint. If you can't land the role of your dreams um, this year, keep going and get it next year. It took me uh, like 500 applications to officially land a UX design role as a consultant. Um, looking back, I wish I would have networked more. I think that is one of the perks of being in a boot camp because that is one of the things that you are um, expected to receive as a network who can really connect you with roles. But just remind yourself to celebrate every tiny victory you have and to stay as positive as possible because again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. This is uh, the perfect, perfect timing if you want, because it kind of answers the questions, the first two questions that came in the chat. So the first question was from Dana asking if you have any advice for getting your first UX job. You've touched upon that briefly. And the second question from Denise was, what would you say to your younger self starting out in the field? <laughs> what could you have done differently if you knew what you knew now? And you just said that networking would be the answer to that. Is there anything that you want to add to these questions that are pretty much the same question? So what can one do to find their first job and uh, to, to, to just to start out as good as possible in the field? Yeah, I would continue going to events like this, whether they're virtual or in person. 
Um, I've learned from people that networking makes it so much easier to find a new role, but that doesn't mean that you can't get a role without having a large network. All of my corporate roles I have received without having um, an internal connection. So I think it would have been way easier if I had that network. Um, and then some other tips I recommend for your first job is to uh, really be your authentic self. Um, I, and take that with a grain of salt. I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to have a work persona versus uh, a regular persona. And so I like to be my full self when I create my portfolio or my Melissa in Tech content on Instagram or TikTok, um, just because I think I want to work at a place that accepts me uh, because who I am helps me be a more empathetic designer. So I would really encourage you to network a lot um, attend these types of events and then also be authentic because designers, uh, when they create their portfolios or resumes, um, everyone is going to share their design process, which we all know is the same. So what makes you you? So I would really focus on what makes you you as a designer. Melissa, I, I think you have like the sixth sense for the chat questions, because the next question would be any notable <laughs> advice for portfolios. And uh, and yeah, definitely you just touched on a very important piece of advice that I also give. Um, be honest about who you are. Um, show up in a very authentic way. It's something that I learned on UX goodies myself, because in the beginning, I felt like I kind of had to be this person that's like, I don't know, very neutral, very not showing personality because this is a con this is a profile about just content content needs to be objective and then i realized very quickly that what the story is what makes people uh, engage and it, it's what makes the content interesting it's what makes it valuable essentially and that's what i was aiming to do create valuable content and you can't do that if you're not authentic and you can't do that if you're if you don't uh, open up if you're not honest if you're not vulnerable if you don't share your honest story uh, and struggles as a designer. So definitely that goes for the recruiting, for the hiring process as well. You want to be yourself because even if they hire the person that you try to emulate and try to be, what will you do, do after that? Will you have to pretend like for the next couple of years that's uh, counterintuitive? It, it doesn't make sense, counterproductive. So uh, definitely uh, be honest, even from the hiring process, because you want to make sure that it's an honest match. It's not just they want you for who you pose uh, into being. So we touched on that question as well. Let's see what would be the next question. Uh, Sophia asked something that we've been through uh, just now. What would you say to people who are starting their career path now? Uh, question from Timea. Um, I have taken a couple of courses on UX design for beginners and what is quite confusing for me is how to proceed on this path when not having the necessary finances for a bootcamp. Are there any tools that one should really not miss when trying to develop in this field? How to move on? Yeah, I love this. I absolutely love this question because actually, um, the boot camp that I was involved in again was really awesome, and it wasn't at the pace that I had really was I wanted. But another huge reason is because um, I'm an American, so I have a lot of student debt from my, my university, and I was in the same financial situation where I felt um, kind of guilty for taking time learning so much without making money because I have the scarcity mindset. So. The way I tried to pivot it was I uh, just continued finding free courses online. Like um, right now, this didn't exist, but the Google UX certificate program would be a really great option. I've heard phenomenal things about it. But then also, if you do have some experience um, where you feel comfortable sharing your portfolio or your work, um, reaching out to people who post little jobs here and there. And I don't want to say little as in they're not as important, but low paying jobs. Um, that's what I did. I would creep for hours every single day on Craigslist and on Indeed gigs and occasionally LinkedIn to say, hey, I can do this job for $100. And that was in 2018. It would take me like three weeks to do, but I, I felt um, more excited about it and less concerned about my finances because I kept telling myself, hey, I am a UX designer. I'm earning money for it. Was it any good? 
probably not. I am too embarrassed to look at those projects, um, but it really helped me uh, overcome that obstacle. So maybe that's something um, that's something you could try out is to look on Craigslist or Fiverr, or I think there's a new um, freelancing site called Contra. If you don't feel comfortable advertising your skills, I would say try to find folks in the industry who are willing to mentor you um, pro bono. So without having to pay that you can um, create a custom path for um, and then continue following content creators who um, inspire you and give you good tips to keep moving forward with or without those finances. Perfect answer <laughs> from my perspective. Definitely you, you will need to kind of replace uh, in a way what boot camps offer you. So the boot camp is like the whole package of everything, the instruments you need to make the transition and they're kind of the shortcut if you want, but you can definitely do it on your own. It's just gonna be a bit um, uh, more uh, challenging. It's gonna take a bit longer, but it's totally doable. So indeed you're gonna need a mentor. Uh, you're gonna need to do some actual work, some actual projects. And so you can, you can try to do that uh, by yourself as well. Um, again, it's gonna be a bit trickier, but it's, it's totally doable. So good luck with that. Uh, the next question is from uh, Shika. Uh, hope I didn't butcher the name. I am a graphic designer newly moved to Montreal, looking to switch into UX UI because just want to grow out more when they, uh, when only being a graphic designer. Please advise me how should I climb this ladder and how to prepare for the portfolio if I don't have anything to show. So for a person transitioning from a graphic design background, I don't know if you have a lot to speak to that, but uh, what are your thoughts about uh, making that switch, which is one of the most common transitions, uh, if uh, at least in our bootcamp, we see it very often, people from graphic design moving into UX uh, design. So what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I agree. It's definitely one of the most common transitions I've seen in the industry. I would recommend to um, not dilute your experience as a graphic designer because like we talked about earlier on this call, visual design is becoming really in demand. I know um, during my recent interview process at other companies, they really uh, drilled down on questions on how comfortable I feel with visual design and graphic design. But to make that transition, I would say to um, instead of creating a design that makes you feel good or um, proud of your work, which I'm not saying don't be proud of your work or excited about your work. I am suggesting that before you create a design, think about why would the user want to see this? What would it help the user, the end user um, with? Is it going to make them feel better? Is it going to make them feel worse? Is it going to um, allow them to go through one of their user tasks that they need to a little bit faster. How can we make the user's experience better? Um, usually we can do this by um, lessening the amount of text and increasing the amount of visual design so that it's consistent, it's easy, people know where they're at in that user flow. Um, but other than that, I would say the with the portfolio aspect, um, it's definitely not about quantity, it's about quality. So I think um, if you can't afford a boot camp, which again is really helpful because it contains all those tools that you need, like the network, mentorship, and then also what do I need to know to break into this industry? I would recommend you finding a website or an app where you are like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. I wish X, Y, Z would happen and you create that. No one is ever going to say, where is this online? Let me see the live version. No one is ever going to ask that. What people want to see in your portfolio is, do you understand the design process or are you just trying to show that you can make something look a little bit more clean and a little bit more visual appealing? So um, maybe focus on one, building one project where you would want to improve personally. Perfect answer. <laughs> From my perspective, I stand by that everything she said. <laughs> so uh, well, the only thing I would add is just uh, regarding the background and take it a bit uh, broader. So I feel that regardless of the background you have, there is some way in which you can search for transferable skills 
from your existing experience or even from your educational background, things that will be valuable to the design process. So a graphic designer definitely has an advantage because they already uh, master some of the, of the key elements of, of building a product. So the visual side and how to make it uh, look uh, understandable how to make it look good in a way, right? But um, regardless of the background you have, there will always be some advantages that you bring to the design process or some interesting perspectives, interesting angles. You will be able to leverage uh, to some extent the experience that you already have. So um, this goes for anyone out there, not just graphic designers, try to look into what you can take out of your experience and bring to the design process and make that if you want your 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 story and the definition of who you are as a ux designer or who you can become so you can even use that to advertise yourself right so i'm a i'm i've been a medical professional and so this helped me build a lot of empathy and be able to i don't know work under stress and whatever it's just a random example so you can transfer that to a quality that UX designers might need in their in the process. So always uh, try to understand how to take what you've done and turn it into something valuable to your story as a as a designer. Okay. Um, next question. KJ is asking if there are uh, specific industries that are more likely to hire a, to hire a bootcamp or a certificate program graduate. I have an answer for that as well, but uh, if you want to go first or. <laughs> I would say from my perspective, again, I um, switched my career from marketing to design between 2017 and 2019. And I didn't hear anyone saying, um, I, I didn't receive any responses from an industry or a company saying, we are only focused on hiring boot camp or certificate program graduates, I have noticed an uptrend in more colleges or universities saying that they are going to encourage um, HCD degrees, human computer design um, as a degree. Uh, but I, I cannot really speak to this. I, I will pass it off. No, but I think that's the answer. I don't think there's a specific industry that uh, is more welcoming towards a uh, bootcamp or certificate program graduates. My feeling and my understanding, and I've been immersed in the UX education space for the past couple of years, so I spend a lot of time in this problem space. And what I feel today, um, and, and I speak for from the experience of mentoring people, helping them transition at the, our bootcamp. So I feel that probably there are some not necessarily industries, but companies where the product is very, very sophisticated in the sense that it's very complex. It has to engage a lot of teams. There's there, there are, let's say, design challenges that can't be welcoming for someone with, uh, with too little experience in the industry because in some roles you have to master a lot of things. So you need to be senior. So I think that industries for me feel welcoming uh, across but definitely different products and different complexity to that product might be a bit um, restrictive towards welcoming junior designers. And it also depends on the, the team capacity at that company. So if that company has a complex design challenge, this is a, a complex, sophisticated product, and they already have a couple of senior designers, then definitely they are open and comfortable to hiring a junior designer. But if they don't have any designer and they desperately need a designer to solve very complex and difficult problems, then they will probably need a senior. And that's that's how the differences emerge. It's a difference in the role, if you want, and not necessarily per industry, or at least in my experience and in our experience at Mento, we didn't really um, feel that. But it's an interesting question, and I will be thinking about it uh, moving on. Uh, the next question, um, how do you reconcile advocating for your users and creating UX to meet the bottom line of the company? Example, features that keep the users on the app, but is bad for the user, like Facebook, dark patterns, and so on. It's a tough question, <laughs> um, if you have any thoughts on it. Yeah, that's definitely a tough question. I actually just saw um, one of uh, the other content creators in the space create something yesterday regarding this, asking themselves, do I make it easier for companies to make money? And um, it is something that you have to think about. And again, it is a tough question to answer, but I always remind myself uh, that I am focused on creating something that's 
the most accessible I can create. So what I mean by that is creating um, designs with equity in mind, ensuring that regardless of their vision or their hearing impair impairment, excuse me, um, they'll be able to interact with the experience that we're creating as uh, a group or as an individual contributor. I, I think that if you're really against it and it's really terrible for the user, I would do your best to advocate for the user. But sometimes um, I've learned this in my, my experience as a consultant in the UX space that you have to pick and choose your battles. So I would say if um, you really feel like an ick feeling, I would try to um, recommend a different experience, but back it up with research and um, another idea or suggestion to pursue the same needs for the business, but also encouraging a better user experience. Yes, <laughs> I, I think that we have time for one last question. I was just typing a message, oh, but I, I kind of typed it. I don't know how to not send it as a direct message. I'm going to ask the last question for today. And in the meantime, try to send a message to, to everyone in the chat. So the last question would be, um, OK, another one about uh, graphic design. Okay, how and where can one find a mentor who can help in the process of learning UX design uh, without being part of a bootcamp? So um, where can people find mentors? Yeah, I love that idea. What I used to do when I first started was I would creep on LinkedIn and um, just find people in the industry that I thought um, were inspiring and motivating to look at. And I would send them a direct message. Um, I just used to Google good outreach message for a LinkedIn connection and ask them if they were willing to connect. Um, I also reached out to people who I met on Instagram and TikTok just to see if they had any ideas. Um, I didn't, if I didn't message them, I thought just following them would re be really inspiring. And then also um, through your company, I think the best way to pursue your uh, career goals or any goals in life is to remind yourself that you are your biggest advocate. So if there's something you want, don't be shy about it. Um, really market to your network that, hey, I'm looking for a mentor in this space. Does anyone know? Because the louder you speak up for yourself, the more people will connect you with um, that mentor or opportunities in the future. Oh, sorry, I was typing and I was uh, <laughs> unmuted. So probably everybody kind of felt my 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 typing in the chat uh, <laughs> through you throughout your last question. I apologize for that. And uh, I think we've reached the end of this conversation. Uh, I want to thank everyone who joined. We're going to spend the last couple of minutes, um, first of all, thanking our uh, wonderful guest, Melissa, for accepting this invitation and inviting you all to follow her on Instagram and on TikTok. Melissa, if you could share your socials in the chat so that people can find you if you're not following her already. Uh, I want to invite then all of you to share your LinkedIn profile in the chat so we can connect with one another and maybe have other design conversations outside this meeting. So now's the time for you to share your LinkedIn profile. We will leave this room open for a couple of minutes after we say bye, and you will be able to have the time to, to connect with other people. I also want to thank our wonderful host and uh, director that's been putting us uh, uh, on the stage on and off and helping us with, uh, with this event, uh, Radu, my co-founder at Mental Design Academy. Just want to remind everyone that if you are looking for a UX bootcamp or if you know someone who's looking for a UX bootcamp, send them over to us. We won't be salesy. We won't try to push our bootcamp. We're going to help them uh, figure out what's best for them. And uh, this is one of our core principles. And our core value is to be transparent, to be honest, and to act in the best interest of that person. So we're very, we want to change the design industry. So we'll be very honest. And if, if they're not the right match for Mento, if something else makes sense for them, we will tell them that directly. So uh, feel free to, to reach out to Mento and follow us on socials as well. And I think that's it, Melissa, if you want to share a couple of last thoughts before we let people connect on LinkedIn and everything. <laughs> I just want to say thank you all so much. It was truly an honor to be able to talk with all of you and I hope we can connect. 
Wonderful. So with that being said, I'm going to say bye. I'm going to close my camera. I invite everyone to close their camera and mute themselves, but the room will stay open for like five more minutes so that everyone gets the chance to go through the links and find people they want to connect with. And, and so we also make sure that we don't meet here for one moment in time and then forget about it. And everyone who wants to take a screenshot, do it now while we're still with our cameras open and share it on Instagram, tag Melissa, uh, Melissa in tech. I think she shared our, uh, her link in the meantime. Tag UX goodies if you want, I will reshare it. And uh, let's show the world that we're meeting, that design events are happening and there that everyone is welcome to take part in them. So, um, so yeah. Bye everyone, sending lots of design love and see you in the next event that's already announced on, on our meetup group. <laughs>